Hi everyone! Today we're going to look at bonds payable issued at a discount and I'm your instructor Brandy. Specifically, today we're going to look at the calculations for the present value, the bond table, and the journal entries. I've actually posted a worksheet for you for this video, so if you wanted to follow along and have your paper look like mine, you can go to the link that's in the description. All right, so here's the example we're looking at today. On January 1st, 2019, 007 Corp issues two-year bonds with a face value of $500,000 and an annual interest rate of 4%. At the time of the bond issuance, the market interest rate was 5%. The bonds pay interest on January 1st and July 1st each year. And so just to take a step back here, when we're talking about bonds payable, we are talking about a company or a government. In this example, we're talking about a company who is issuing bonds and when they issue bonds they are essentially borrowing money from the bondholders. So the bondholders are going to give them money, give them cash and then over the period of the bond the company who's issuing the bonds so in this case 007 corp is going to pay its bondholders interest every six months and then at the end of the period at the end of the two years 007 corp is going to have to pay back its bondholders the five hundred thousand dollars so now what makes this a little bit strange is that our bond rate is different from the market interest rate because our bonds only pay four percent interest where the bondholder we're trying to attract they can could go to another company and purchase 5% bonds so they would be getting more interest every single six month period and so because the bond interest rate that we're offering is lower than the market interest rate there is going to be a discount on our bonds in very plain terms this means that we're going to get less money up front from the bondholders and we will have to pay back $500,000 at the end of the two years so the first thing we're going to want to do is find out the amount of cash we're receiving on January 1st 2019 we can use our financial calculator to do this and personally I use the BA2 plus but most financial calculators work very similar. The row of buttons we're looking for is this one here. So the variables N, I, Y, P, V, P, M, T and F, V. That's how you know it's a financial calculator. I like to write my variables out across my page. And so we're gonna fill out all of the variables except for PV, because that's the one we're going to want to calculate today. And the PV is going to represent the amount of cash we're gonna receive from the bondholders on January 1st, 2019. All right, let's talk through what our variables mean. N is the number of periods or the number of interest payments. So this is a two year bond, but it's going to pay interest twice a year. So the number of periods is four, so two years, times times two times per year. IY is going to be our market interest rate and the market interest rate in this example is 5% per year but because we're paying interest twice a year we're going to divide it by two so our IY is equal to 2.5. PMT is going to be the cash payments we're going to pay out every six months. So this is going to be based on our face value of our bond so 500,000 times our bond interest rate of 4% divided by two because the 4% is an annual interest rate and we are going to pay interest semi-annually. So our payments are going to be $10,000 every six months. FV is going to be the amount that we need to pay back to our bondholders at the end of the bond period. So in this case, we need to repay our bondholders $500,000. And to put this into your calculator, you just push the number and then push the variable. But before I begin, I'm just going to double check that my PY is set to one. And to do this, I'm pushing second IY with a little PY above it. I'm going to push one and then enter. And so to put this into my calculator, I'm going to push 4 and then N, 2.5 and then push IY, 10,000, push PMT, five hundred thousand, and then push FV. And then I'm going to push CPT for compute and PV. And we've calculated in this case that our PV is $490,595. We're receiving $490,000 in cash today and we are going to pay back our bondholders $500,000 in two years. And so that's why we're saying this is issued at a discount. And now that we have that piece of the puzzle, we can go ahead and create our bond table. Now, if you're looking in your textbook, um, they most likely call this an amortization table. And I find that really misleading for intro accounting students because we don't use the word amortization anywhere in our journal entries. So I like to call this bond table just so we 
we don't get confused. All right, so at the top of our table, we have room for our headings. These are gonna be date, interest payment, or you could call this cash payment, interest expense, reduction of discount. And if you're looking at your textbook, this is probably where they call it amortization. And you can just cross that out and put reduction of discount. Then the discount value and bond value or bond carrying value. On the date that we issue bonds, January 1st, 2019, we're just gonna fill in the last two columns. We're issuing the bonds for $490,595. And so this is going to be our bond value at January 1st. The discount amount is going to be the difference between the future value or face value of 500,000 and the amount that we're receiving in cash, the 495.95. So our total discount balance on January 1st, 2019 is going to be $9,405. So now after six months on July 1st, we have to pay out interest to our bondholders. Our interest payment is based on the bond interest rate. The calculation for the cash payment is the future value or face value of the bond, in this case, the $500,000, multiplied by the bond interest rate of 4%. And this 4% is an annual interest rate and we're paying interest every six months. So we're going to divide it by two. You're gonna notice that this is the same cash payment that we calculated when we were calculating the payment for our present value calculation at the beginning of the question. Okay, so now this is where the table gets a little bit strange. The amount that we're going to calculate for our interest expense is actually going to be based on the carrying value of the bond multiplied by the market interest rate. In this case, our carrying value of the bond is $490,595. And we're going to multiply that by the market interest rate of 5%. Again, this is an annual interest rate, but we're only calculating our expense for six months. So we're going to divide it in half. The difference between the interest expense and the amount of cash that we're actually paying out is going to reduce the discount on the bond. The goal here is that by the end of the bond term, in this case, two years, we want the bond discount to be zero so that the carrying value of the bond is going to be equal to $500,000. Now the new carrying value of the bond is calculated as $500,000 minus the current discount of 7140, or you can calculate this by taking the old carrying value of 490,595 and adding the reduction of the discount amount. So 490,595 plus 2,265. And you get the exact same amount. So you can choose which way you want to do this. And we're gonna go through this process three more times. So if you feel confident, you can pause the video here and try the next few lines on your own and see if you can get this before you watch me go through it. On January 1st, 2020, another six months has gone by. This means that again, we need to make a cash payment and the cash payment is again calculated as the face value of the bond times the bond interest rate and divided by two. The cash payment amount is going to be the same at every cash payment date. Our interest expense is going to be calculated by taking the 492,860 times the market interest rate of 5% divided by two. The difference between the 12,321 of interest expense and the $10,000 cash payment is going to reduce our discount. And then we're going to calculate our new carrying amount of the bond, either by taking the 500,000 minus our new discount of 4819 or taking the old carrying amount of 492,860 plus the reduction of the bond. On July 1st, 2020, our cash payment is going to be $10,000. Our interest expense is going to be the carrying value of 495,181 multiplied by 5% divided by two. And the difference between the interest expense and the cash payment is going to reduce our discount. Our new bond carrying amount is going to be $497,561. And that's going to be calculated by taking $500,000 and subtracting our discount balance of 2,439 or by taking the old carrying amount and adding in the reduction of the bond discount. Now on January 1st, 2021, this is kind of where the magic happens. Our interest payment again is going to be $10,000. Our interest expense is going to be calculated by taking 497,561 and multiplying it by the market interest rate of 5% divided by two. And the difference between the cash payment and the interest expense, we are hoping, cross our fingers, do a a little drum roll on your desk that the reduction of the bond discount is going to equal
equal the old discount balance. So now when we reduce the discount balance one last time, it is going to magically go to zero and our bond carrying amount is going to become 500,000, which is equal to our face value or our future value in our initial question. And believe me, you're gonna wanna do a happy dance when this happens on the midterm. It's gonna feel so good. All right, now that our bond table works, we've gotten it perfectly to 500,000, so we are happy. We can move on to our journal entries. So just taking a step back here, we are gonna need to do a journal entry first to set up or issue the bonds. And then for the dates in between in the table, we're going to have to do our interest payment journal entries. And then at the very end of the term, at the end of the two years, we're going to have to do an entry to pay back our bondholders. On January 1st, 2019, we are going to do our journal entry to issue the bonds. So we calculated that the amount of cash that we're going to receive for these bonds is $490,595. So that is the amount of cash we're getting or that we are borrowing from the bondholders. That's going to be our debit cash in our journal entry. So that's our present value that we calculated in step one. We're going to credit bonds payable for $500,000 and the difference we're going to set up as an account called discount on bonds payable. And this discount on bonds payable account would stay with the bonds payable account on your balance sheet and so it would act to reduce the value of the bonds payable account. The next journal entry that we're going to do is for the interest payment. So the numbers for these journal entries are going to come directly from the table we created. And you have done so much work to come up with these numbers, so please use them in your journal entries. Don't just ignore them. On July 1st, 2019, we have paid out $10,000 cash. So the $10,000 is going to be our credit to cash account. The amount that we've calculated using the market interest rate is going to be our interest expense. That's what's gonna go to our income statement. We can see that there's a difference between our debits and credits. And as you guys are accounting students, I'm hoping you're getting that funny feeling in your stomach that's telling you mm, our debits and credits don't balance but we know that they need to so we need to do something in order to make our total debits equal our total credits or our accounting equation just isn't going to work so the difference is going to be put to the account called discount on bonds payable and you can see that we're crediting this account it was originally set up as a debit for 9405 and now we are crediting it and each time that we credit it it's going to get reduced by a a little bit and by the end of the bond term it is going to go to zero just like it did in our table. Now we're going to repeat this process for each line in our table. So each line in your table represents one journal entry and the key here is just to look at the correct line in your table. Um, so maybe bring a ruler or a highlighter into your exam so you can focus on just one line at a time. At the next period January 1st 2020 we are again going to pay interest of $10,000 and that's going to be our credit to cash. Our interest expense will be 12321 and the difference of 2321 will again get credited to discount on bonds payable. On July 1st, 2020, we debit interest expense for $12,380. Our credit to cash is again $10,000 and the difference between the two gets credited to the discount on bonds payable, again reducing that balance. On the last date, on January 1st, 2021, we're going to make two journal entries. The first journal entry is going to be re to record our interest payment and this is going to be just like the rest of the journal entries we've done for interest and the second journal entry is going to be to pay back the bondholders. So the first journal entry on January 1st is to pay the interest. So this again will be debit to interest expense for 12,439, credit to cash, $10,000, and the difference will go to the discount on bonds payable for 2,439. And now after that journal entry is done, our discount on bonds payable is now fully reduced to zero. Now we can clear out our bonds payable account and pay back our bondholders. So again, on January 1st, 2021, we pay back the bondholders $500,000. So we're going to debit bonds payable for $500,000 and we're going to credit cash for $500,000. The bonds payable account is now sitting at zero dollars because we cleared it out. And that's it. Now you know how to calculate the present value of a bond, prepare a bond table, and do the journal entries for a bond issued at a discount. And now in the next video, we're going to practice on another bond question. We'll do the present value calculation, a table, and I'm also going to add in a little bit more complication and we are going to do interest accruals at year end. Thanks for watching everyone.